Greetings from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Stan Gibalisco here. Whiskey One Golf Victor, W1GV, amateur radio operator. Those are my call letters, W1GV. Right now, what you're looking at is two different displays of the same type of data, namely phase shift keying, PSK. This particular mode is binary phase shift keying, or BPSK31, popular among amateur radio operators. My radio right now is tuned to 14.06973 megahertz, so I can listen pretty much to the phase shift keying signals around 14.07. You can see some text printing out here. It seems that I messed up a bit. Well, yes, it does. You misspelled the word seems. Well, that's just the editor in me. My station, Radio ICOM IC718 running 25 watts, etc., etc., etc. Well, here are the signals in the passband that I am using right now. Frequency is on the horizontal axis. Amplitude is on the vertical axis. The green curve represents a rapid response to the signals, and the orange curve a slower response to the same signals. Then the program known as HAMSCOPE, H-A-M-S-C-O-P-E, version 1.56, prints out the text, and you can adjust the colors on your screen and the font and size and everything. Now, this is a pretty good signal coming in here. Now, my receiver's intermediate frequency passband is centered at 1500 hertz audio right there, and it goes up and down about 750 hertz either way of that center. The lowest frequency here is 100 hertz. It tells you that right here. The highest frequency on the display is 2756 hertz. You can actually zoom in if you want. Now it's at 1028 hertz at the bottom, 2352 at the top. You can zoom in on the signal that you're tuned to if you are so predisposed. This is a typical spectrum analyzer-like display. You can also switch it to what they call a waterfall display. And that is what is shown over here on a different program known as DigiPan, which I do not have enabled right now for actual communications use. It's only there for the display because it looks kind of cool and it gives me a different visual take on what I'm looking at. I like to look at them both. Well, this is pretty though, isn't it? Now here you can see the same thing, frequency on the horizontal axis. Amplitude, however, is indicated by the relative color, black being the weakest, blue being a little bit of signal or noise, and then signals generally show up as yellow or sometimes orange. You can uh, program the color scheme for this and also the sensitivity for this. The neat thing about a waterfall display is that it also portrays time in addition to amplitude and frequency. It portrays time by scrolling slowly down the screen. It takes a minute or two from stuff to get from the top to the bottom of the screen. Here, because I've got the display cut down some, it's only about maybe 20 seconds. Uh, but this uh, waterfall display, for some reason, doesn't seem to define itself quite as well as this one zero frequency up to a little over 3000 hertz here. I, I can adjust my intermediate frequency filters to zero in on signals like that 
or to pan out over the entire frequency range like that. This is 1500 hertz wide, 50 hertz wide, 2600 hertz wide, in every case centered at 1500 hertz. But I like to use the 1500 hertz wide filter. And then if I want to zero in on someone, I can tune them in until their pip lands right at 1500 hertz and I can tune them in and if I want to exclude everything else I just take it down to the 50 hertz wide filter and it pretty much gets rid of everything else these people just don't transmit for very long and you can rarely hear both sides of a QSO Looks like we're hearing both sides of this one, though. He's still using the same vertical when we had our last QSO. All right. Now you can see over here what that looks like on the waterfall. This is the program called DigiPan. D-I-G-I-P-A-N. This one's called HamScope over here on the right. Uh, you can Google on those uh, buzzwords and find downloadable uh, programs on the web and they're very very easy on your computer they don't take a lot of processing power I've found that they run best on Windows XP some of the features don't work on Windows 7 this is a Windows 7 computer it will also run both of these programs on Windows 8 but again, not all of the features work on Windows 8. It's about the same as Windows 7. But this works enough on Windows 7 so that I can use it for my purposes. There are an awful lot of other little features on this program. Uh, automatic transmission, CQ. You can put your, uh, what they call a brag file which tells all of the equipment you're using and all of that. I don't use any of that. In fact, my favorite mode is CW. Uh, I just find that uh, using a keyboard to communicate in ham radio kind of wears me out. I write books for a living and I'm on my computer with the keyboard an awful lot as it is. I just don't want to do any more. But CW is cool with that old Vibroplex Vibro Keyer paddle that I got. I love that thing so much I made a video on that too. But these are the these are the two programs that uh, that I have had experience with for phase shift keying 31 or BPSK 31. This particular program called Hamscope by the way will also receive other modes. Uh, it will receive QPSK, I guess that's quad phase shift keying. It will copy CW. It won't work with RTTY because you need a special addition to the program that I haven't been able to get. But if you want to use RTTY, there's yet another program. It's called MMTTY. It says can't open COM4. The reason for that is that that's already being used by Hamscope. If I shut down Hamscope, I should be all right with MMTTY. That's for radio teletype. But you're not going to see anything there, of course. I've got all these programs down here with single launch buttons. That's kind of neat. This will also receive MFSK16 and transmit it. And that is a cool mode. That is a really cool mode. I've never tried packet. So I don't know about that. But BPSK, when you launch this, it seems like every time you got to pull that text window down again. Anyway, those are the two programs. And if you want to get on Phase Shift Keying 31, I can recommend either one of them. They're both good. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, signing off from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory 
United States of America, 73, and so long.